Yeah, I mean, all we got to do is <clears throat> we got to see if that McCaffrey guy's playing. We got to see if Debo's playing. 7-14. They didn't really cash in, in the red zone last week. You know, <clears throat> all we got to do is keep continue to stop that run, get some pressure on Jimmy G, and we'll be good. Welcome to 24 Hour Sports Show, and now I'm here with Daryl Green. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And today, as you can see, I really just put on my coaching hat for this video, going into game preparation, how I would prepare for the 49ers versus the Dolphins game, looking from both perspectives. I think this is the Dolphins' real first test, playing the best defense in the league. They can be had in the passing game, but it's all about how you game plan, how you scheme that up. For the 49ers, it's going to be important to keep the ball in their hands. Jimmy G can't turn over the ball. This is one of the best offenses they're playing, and they don't have as much room for error. Looking at their one blunder on the season, it was against the Kansas City Chiefs. The Dolphins, they have more explosive skilled players than the Kansas City Chiefs. They have a Tyreek Hill. They have a Jalen Waddle. So it's going to be interesting to see. Right here, the first thing I want to look at is I watched this game against the Texans, and I seen the Dolphins play a lot of man coverage. The Dolphins, they got a lot of pressure. Bradley, Bradley Chubb starting to come into his own Melvin Ingram they got a lot of great pressure off the edges and they played man coverage behind it and it looked good you know Xavier Howard those guys Javon Holland it looked good playing man coverage but I want to show you how the 49ers attack man coverages and I really think the unsung hero of this team is Brandon Ayuk when you think you have everything dialed up, you think you got everybody covered, Brandon Ayuk is the guy who gets open against mad coverage. He finds that soft spot in the zone. He's actually a good number one receiver. He does his job, and right here we're going to see him get open with a great route. All he does is, see, right here, see how he keeps his shoulder square upfield? He keeps his shoulder square upfield, and what this does, this holds that safety. Right here, you don't know exactly what route, where he's going to break. He can break outside or he can break inside right here. It is a post, but we don't know that because he runs such a great route and he keeps his shoulder square up the field and that holds the safety that gets him out of position to where he's helping over the top. But all you have to do is beat the guy underneath and now you're going to be open because that safety is out of position due to you having your shoulders upfield. And like I said, I've seen the Dolphins get a lot of pressure against the Texans. And something I wasn't really expecting, but Trent Williams, he can be had in the passing game. We know what he is in the, in the run game. We know the athlete that he is. We know just how big of a guy. He's a mauler in the run game, but he can be had in the passing game. And I saw that. Guys were getting pressures against Trent Williams. Bradley Tubb, well, Melvin Ingram, those are guys who I think can win against Trent Williams. And right here, they just give him a stunt. See, he gets tied down. And the stunt is ran perfectly. The stunt is timed up perfectly. It's ran perfectly. Because the defensive end, he gives that tackle. He buys him time by getting Trent Williams down in the box. All he has to do is loop around the edge. And it's a free lane. It's a free lane to Jimmy G. And I think we're going to see some of that same thing with the Miami Dolphins. That's what I would be doing. That's what I would be practicing, working on some stunts if I'm the Dolphins. And see, this is my game. This is my game of the week for a lot of reasons. I believe this game has major playoff implications. And this is the Dolphins' best test yet. They've played teams better than the 49ers. But as far as defense, as far as two in that offense going against the defense, I feel this is their best complete defense that they'll be playing yet. And Fred Warner, Fred Warner is the guy that makes this thing go. He's my vote currently for defensive player of the year, and I have Mike at number two. But right here, this is what scares me because think about it. We're, if we're, to put it in simpler terms, I want to compare the Miami Dolphins to a basketball team. They play inside out. They like to get shots off in the paint first. And then they start shooting threes. Then they start driving and kicking. That's exactly what they do. They pass it. They run the ball a little bit just to get the play action going. And then they're darting. They're darting across the middle. That's their offense. They throw the ball across the middle of the field. And then once you start playing on that, then they start taking their shots outside to a Jalen Waddle. Then they start taking their shots outside to a Tyreek Hill. But I just don't know if that play action will be here because the San Francisco 49ers stop the run. They stop the run. And when I say they stop the run, they stop the run. And this is this is the type of thing that scares me because Fred Warner, what separates him from an average inside linebacker is his eyes. 
his eyes. He's very, very disciplined. And he has the technique. You can tell he's been coached up like the best of them. He's been well. He's reciprocated that coaching on the football field. Right here, this is a quads formation. This is a four-by-one quads formation. Fred Warren is lined up outside of the tackle box, and he still makes a play at the line of scrimmage. Think about that. Think of the range you have to have to play middle linebacker. You're lined up outside of the tackle box against a quads formation, and you still make the tackle on quarterback draw. And this is the difference right here. He sees the ball snaps. He doesn't move. He doesn't move at all. And then once he sees the quarterback take off, now he's going to make that play at the line of scrimmage. And it's all about eyes. That's why I think the play action won't be there. And to show you exactly what I mean, go further in depth, look at how this linebacker for the Houston Texans plays the run. It's a play action play, but it's all about reading your keys. The way you read your keys on a run play is the way you're going to read your keys on a play action play because it looks the same. So right here, we see he just runs downhill. He runs downhill. He doesn't really, re he's not really reacting to what he's seeing. He's just running downhill trying to stop the run. And contrary to that, I want to show you how Fred Warner plays the run. He's patient. He doesn't just run downhill. He flows and he reacts. His feet are steady. His feet, I don't want to say his feet are slow. But when he sees it, he goes. He doesn't go without seeing it. He sees it, then he goes. That's very important for playing middle linebacker. And right here, look at his steps. Look at his steps. It's patient. It's patient. It's flowing. It's flowing. Right here, he can get to his own. He can get to his own drop. He can find a guy and play man coverage. He can do anything in the position that he's in right now. But he keeps flowing. He diagnoses it. And this is something also that he does. Look at his shed. Look at a block shed. All he does is swipe the hands off, and now he's in the gap ready to make a tackle. But do you see the difference between how a Texans linebacker plays the run to how Fred Warner plays the run? It's slow playing, and that's going to clog up the lanes. That's going to slow down the play action. That's not going to have guys open across the middle. That's going to let Nick Bosa tee off at you all game. But of course, Mike McDaniel, the nerd, he has the perfect counter for that. Right here, we're going to see this play. It's not a play action. All he does is take the snap, turn directly around, and because they diagnosed man coverage. They diagnosed man coverage on this play, and this is this can be a hot route. This could be an audible. This could be anything, but it's the play that's called, and we see the nickel. We see how he's playing off, so the slant route is automatically there. He's not playing inside leverage. He's, he's more closer to the outside leverage, so we know the slant is there. We see the edge rusher to the side blitzing. And it's just, it's wide open. This is the counter to that because you don't have to worry about linebackers, what they're doing. As long as their alignment isn't too far in the way of that passing lane, it's going to be there. Just a straight turnaround, throw the slant. And before, before I get into this play, I want to say a lot of people, they weren't fond of 13 points against the Saints. Let me say, the 49ers, they drove the football. I watched the game. They drove the football. They just couldn't, they couldn't score in the red zone. That's something that has to get cleaned up. They scored in the red zone pretty, pretty well against Arizona, but they really just couldn't capitalize against New Orleans. And watching this, New Orleans is a good defense. I know they have the bridge quarterback situation, and that's really making them look worse than they are. But right here, it's just another the way to attack man coverage. Miami Dolphins have to prepare because they're going to see a lot of 11 personnel. They're going to see a lot of 2 by 2 11 personnel with George Kittle on the line of scrimmage. And this, it causes a responsibility. It causes responsibilities to get mixed up and guys get confused. Right here, Tyron Matthew is supposed to be manned up on him. But of course, if you have no man, what is your job? Get deep, play over the top. And we see him getting into his back pedal because he's in the belief that this is a play action. George Kittle's blocking. That's what his belief is. That's why he's getting so deep. Because if it's not, you will be breaking on this. But look at look at the distance between him and George Kittle. Because George Kittle sneaks off of that line of scrimmage and just gets wide open. The linebacker, he gets a little confused because he sees George Kittle. But then he also remembers, oh, I got the running back right here. So then we see George Kittle sneak out. And this is yards at their catch. This is what this offense is predicated on. This is what we see the Kansas City Chiefs doing with Kelsey. This is what we see these West Coast teams doing. When I dropped the video on the Chiefs, I said, play design is everything. Scheme is everything. You don't even have to have the best players. If you can scheme it up like this, just get a guy in there who's talented. He's going to do the job. Kittle. The problem is he can break plays like this. He can really break plays like this. And you just have to be wary of it. You have to know where he's at. And one thing I do want to point out before concluding this video, 
Tua suffered an ankle injury. Backup quarterback had to come in and finish against the Texans. It's going to be interesting because, look, his pocket mobility. Tua is not the most mobile. You don't see him running down a field like an Allen, like a Lamar. You don't see that. But what we do see him is evading rushers, evading pressure, and just moving around in the pocket. Just look at his, look at his pocket movement. This is teaching tape to know where you're at, to keep your eyes downfield, and then throw a touchdown, that's special. But the, with that ankle injury, with Nick Bosa, how these guys going to get after him, it's going to be real, real interesting. I think that's going to play, play a lot into this game. And also, for the 49ers, we have some guys fighting injuries. We got Mitchell, McCaffrey, and Debo Samuel fighting injuries. going to be interesting to see how they look come game day if they play. But, you know, with this game... I would say I have to take the 49ers winning this one somewhere around 24 to 21 because I don't see those same passing lanes getting open. I don't see them being able to attack the middle of the field like they have because the run game, the 49ers are going to stop the run game. I'm confident in saying that with my pick. The 49ers will stop the Dolphins run game. Therefore, Tua can't eat off the play action. Therefore, they have to attack the outside of the field. And this team, they just eat, they thrive off passing across the middle of the field. And I just don't believe it's going to be there. The 49ers, they didn't run the ball particularly well against the Saints. But like I said, this Saints defense isn't a slouch either. So I think if they can run the ball, get back to what they're used to, capitalize in the red zone, they win this game.